Coming to the instruments, let us start with the basic beginning where we use we want to drain the bladder. Mostly used in previous days was for, uh, rubber catheter. Okay, it is of different sizes. Be it six from six for twelve French, fourteen French, sixteen French. Smaller the number, smaller is the tip of the uh, catheter size. For in pediatrics and all, they use eight French also. So the smaller number, it is smaller in size. There is a slit opening. You can see here there is a slit opening at the tip of the instrument that helps you to drain the bladder. It will be there on either side of the uh, foleys or the either side of the catheter. So this is the rubber catheter where there is a slit opening at the tip. Two slit openings on either side will be there which helps to drain the bladder. Uh, from there it will be drained down to the through the urethra. Okay. And there is retention of urine when you want to drain the bladder immediately. Okay, that is when you use this catheter. When you want to drain the bladder immediately and temporarily. That is when we use this. Whereas in examples like in pregnancy, a retrograde uterus is there where she has developed a retention of urine due to compression on the urethra. She is not able to pass urine. That is when you can, for immediate draining, you can use rubber catheter. In labor, when the patient is having severe pain or she is 7 to 8 centimeters dilated, she cannot walk down to the washroom for voiding urine that is also when you can use temporary relieving of bladder or when the bladder is drained there is good descent of the head so you want to drain the bladder frequently that is when you will do and use rubber catheter for draining the bladder and also before and after operative interventions like forceps delivery where there is severe pain in the perineum and she would not be able to pass urine due to pain causing spasm of the muscles that is also one place where you can use this catheter for temporary relief whereas in destructive operations we usually prefer for a long term catheterization that in that case we use a self-retaining one like Foley's catheter which we will discuss later and in postpartum period if you want to drain bladder if the patient developed postpartum hemorrhage immediately you want to drain the bladder that is when you can use and also in cases like retain placenta when you want to remove the placenta before that you want to drain the bladder that is also place where you can use a rubber catheter. Other uses of this rubber catheter other than draining the bladder is you can use as a tonic where you will want to do uh, for like myomectomy procedure you want to tie the uterine arteries alone that is when you can use this rubber catheter as a tonic you can tie it with this rubber catheter. When you do not have a, a nasal oxygen administration if you don't have anything that time you can use like nasal catheter is not available that time you can use but we do not use generally and also as a mucus sucker you can connect the other end of the uh, catheter to the suction apparatus and the, in, uh, the tip where the slits are there that you can use for sucking the mucus which we generally do not use. As such rubber catheter only is not used because it is like reusable we use for multiple patients so it has to be sterilized problem of infection and all is high so we do not generally use nowadays what we use is nail cath it is a plastic use and throw like that so we use nail cath just to avoid infections coming to foley's catheter as we earlier told during rubber catheter foley's is a self retaining you can see an inflated bulb over here okay it, this is also just like the same uh, rubber catheter where there is a slit at the tip. Okay, it will also help you to drain the bladder. But there, in the other end, you can see there are two openings. There are two channels running here. One will in when you inflate a distilled water in this in this part of the channel, the bulb will get inflated and the foleys will get retained in, inside the bladder. This makes it a self-retaining one. Okay, this is also a type of a catheter only. Same, whatever we told uses of the rubber can be used here also. Since it is self-retaining, here we prevent, we want to keep it for a long time for six hours and plus. That is when we prefer this, like pre-operatively when she's undergoing a cesarean section or abdominal hysterectomies. That is when we prefer this because it is a self-retaining. Same like the other one, this also has a two slit opening at the tip and the other side can, this is for draining the bladder and this we connect it to a euro bag. Okay, euro bag we connect, I mean urine will be drained into the bag. And the catheter has two channels, as we already told, two channels are there, uh, one for urine drainage and the other one is used to push the water. We use distilled water to push it and so that this gets inflated and the catheter bulb stays there and it will 
become a self retaining and will not come out because it is inflated with around 10 ml of distilled water it cannot cross the urethra by itself and fall down examiners are asking what will you use you preferably use distilled water in emergency when you do not have a distilled water we can use normal saline also but they ask why it is not preferred because normal saline when you are using for a long time, imagine if you are giving it for a 10 days, 15 days, it can get crystallized, okay? And then it will become difficult to remove. Then you have to cut open to remove. That is why we do not prefer normal saline when we want, we know that catheter will stay for longer time. If there is a bladder injury and you want to retain the catheter for more than 2-3 weeks, that is when you should not use normal saline. You should use a distilled water to inflate the bulb. Coming to the uses of Foley's catheter, just like we told rubber catheter uses same thing and in the same place we can use Foley's catheter also. Since it is self retaining and you leave it for a longer time and it is costlier, we use in preferable cases. And when we want to use us for a single use, then we use Nelcat or rubber catheter. Eclampsia, when you want to drain the bladder also and you want to monitor magnesium sulfate toxicity by knowing the renal output. Okay, output is very important to know the renal toxicity because magnesium sulfate is washed out through the renals. So, output should be at least 30 ml per hour. So, that is why we will catheterize patient until she is on the regimens of magnesium sulfate in eclampsia. Otherwise, if they have undergone a surgery or if they have undergone a, a operative delivery, then also we can use this instrument. Retroverted gravid uterus causing compression on the urethra again where you want to, it will, until it becomes an abdominal organ, you want to retain the catheter, that is when also you can use it. And give the rest to bladder following an operation or case of a suspected bladder injury. Okay, for preoperatively, we insert like for a cesarean section and also for abdominal hysterectomies. And in suspected bladder injury, when you are thinking there should be some bladder was advanced during your cesarean, you are close to the bladder, that time also you can use. And if you have injured bladder, that time also you have to use it. Coming to atonic PPH. In this, we will catheterize the bladder as this will help the bladder to drain and uterus will get contracted. If the bladder is well distended, then the uterus atonicity is more. So, we drain the bladder. First management in atonic PPH or PPH is to catheterize the bladder. Okay, when we give uh, two IV bore, large bore IV cannulas, that is when we have to also drain the bladder or catheterize the bladder. This is one of the important steps in atonic PPH management. And also, if you inflate, for example, just see, this balloon is inflated, you put the catheter into the uterine cavity and inflate the bulb inside the uterine cavity. This causes a pressure. It acts as a pressure against the uterine wall and prevents PPH. This is balloon tamponade. You can put the catheter into the uterine cavity and inflate. This is used in PPH in two ways. One as a catheterization self, another one as a balloon tamponade also. So now you know about the instruments that are used to drain the bladder. So this is another one more instrument you can see here. This is a metal catheter. Other than the rubber catheter or Foley's catheter, this is a metal catheter. So as we know metal, it cannot be used in through. It is reusable. So we use for multiple times. This where we use, this goes for autoclaver sterilization. This we use in vaginal hysterectomies or cystocele repair where before the procedure you want to drain the bladder and leave it where we cannot use rubber catheter in, due to infection and all we use this as a instrument with this we can know the extent of bladder or descent of bladder in hysterectomy also by knowing the till where is the base of the bladder and also drains the bladder and helps eases your procedure so we know about the bladder and its instruments why do we do it for example like in pph and also draining the bladder in labor makes descent easier and faster next coming to uh, instrument sponge holding forceps you can see it has two fenestrated ends you can see the holes in this in the uh, tip of the instrument fenestration is nothing but the gap or the hole okay fenestrated ends serrations with the serration and a lock this is a serration you can see the lines over here so this is a serration and this is a lock so this is a fenestrated tip with serrations and a lock okay this is the instrument this is a sponge holding forceps why do we use this be it any procedure first thing that we do is cleaning the area or the parts by which we are going to operate or which we are going to handle. So, for example, in delivery, we clean the perineum and the surrounding structures. In abdominal, we clean up to the mid of the thighs to ziphy sternum. 
in cesarean or hysterectomy anything any procedure we clean so this is the instrument which helps us to hold the sponge and drain or clean the clean the field of surgery with an antibiotic solution be it betadine solution or spirit whatever we use we use this instrument for cleaning the parts and also just not that okay this is very soft and gentle instrument as we know pregnant uterus has due to high vascularity the cervix and all is very soft we cannot use a harsh instruments like valsalam or alice over the pregnant uterus uh, cervix so that is when if you want to hold the pregnant uterus cervix we always prefer sponge holding forceps because this doesn't harm the tissue at all in case like in pregnancy when you want to do cervical encerclage that is when we use this instrument to hold the cervix and not valsalam in any antenatal patient or pregnant patient when we want to do a, a hold the tissues we use valsalam only because if we use any other instruments like valsalam or alice it will get torn because it is very soft and fragile and also in pregnant soft cervix during pregnancy we use for cerclage and after delivery cervical tear repair and retain placenta for example in a cervical if the cervix is torn then you want to do a hold the cervix tip at the tip and reach up to the apex of the torn cervix this is the cervix which is torn and you will hold this with a sponge holding forceps and you will go up to the apex and you will start taking bites so this instrument helps you to hold the cervix even in cases of cervical tear and also in case of retained placenta or when placenta is unhealthy and come out in parts and bits it happens mostly in case of preterm deliveries so what happens when in preterm deliveries you want to remove the placenta the os is fully open and in anesthesia you uh, if the placenta has come in parts and bits that is when you hold the hold the placenta and gently you can remove with the sponge holding forceps and in pph for uterine packing you use this you take a sterile gauze big gauze and use for uterine packing coming to towel clip towel clip now we learned about initial painting the patient or bef, uh, or cleaning the surgical site with sponge holding forceps then immediately after painting what you will do draping the, as the steps first you will position the patient then you will drain the bladder then you will paint now you will drape it what do you mean by drape you would have seen in surgeries the patient would have been draped with a green towel on all the sides except the surgical side only that side will be open so if the green uh, the towel clip is used hold the drapes okay to hold the drapes in the operative area for example the towel uh, clip has a tooth tip and it has a lock you just have to hold the drapes i'll show a different instrument so this is a towel clip previous uh, this is the instrument otherwise this is also a different type of instrument this we just drape the cloth or the green towel to this and then we will lock it this is the lock and this is the tip of the instrument we will just use to drape the surgical site where we can only see the surgical site and the rest of the area is covered with a green sheet coming to the most commonly used instrument sim speculum okay this is the most commonly used instrument be it any procedure we use this instrument this is the speculum this is a sim speculum this is a bivalved sim speculum you can see a groove over here this is a groove which helps you to collect the secretions from the vagina also or the cervix through this also you can see this cannot be used alone this is always used in combination with the anterior vaginal wall retractor because this only retracts the posterior vaginal wall so when we want to retract the anterior vaginal wall with this is always used in combination with anterior wall vaginal retractor so this is the sim speculum and this is the anterior wall vaginal retractor you can see in the photo also you can see the instrument also this is the most commonly used instrument and i don't know in exam every student picks up this instrument alone in this photo you can see how it is used this retracting the posterior vaginal wall and this retracting the anterior vaginal wall and then you can see the cervix over here so this is the cervix and this is retracting anterior vaginal wall and this is retracting the posterior vaginal wall it is a bival speculum used in almost all gynecological examinations and surgeries this is the most commonly used instrument in opd's also to examine the cervix 
for in case of cervical cancer erosion polyp even if nothing is there and you want to examine also you have to use this instrument alone and it is the opd procedures like copper t insertion and biopsy when you want to take a biopsy in surgeries like dnc and miscarriages or mtp when you want to do a dilatation and curettage or when you want to suction curettage for every procedure we use this instrument and obstetrics name any procedure and we will use this don't name abdominal hysterectomy cesarean section any vaginal procedures we use this instrument obstetrics cervical encephalitis cervical repair of cervical tear repair of episiotomy wound bit whatever grade degree or uh, third degree tear okay we use this instrument do you know who this person is yes he is the father of modern gynecology as a clue for you who is he he is james marion sims he is the father of modern gynecology he gave us the sims speculum which we use in and out in all procedures in our opd be it any vaginal procedure examination we use this instrument in exam the most commonly asked question if you have every student picks up this instrument when they ask whichever you want you pick up when they pick up this instrument they are always asked what are the other contributions of sims it is sims position we showed you in the first photo itself what is sims position and sims surgery that is for vesico vaginal fistula and sims sigmoid catheter also is there these three the first three together is called sims triad okay these are the contributions of sims he is the father of modern gynecology you should remember this okay if you answer the other contribution of sims you will be really appreciated in your exam it is one of the scoring and if you have everybody picks up that instrument and if you answer this then it will be of little more benefit for your exam viva you will be asked or you will be given more marks coming to the cuscus bivalve speculum it is a self retaining speculum you can see this is the instrument it is a bivalve sims is also a bivalve but it is away this is a bivalve where we can retract both anterior and anterior and the posterior vaginal wall at the same time and it has a lock over here you can see the lock if you lock it then you will not be able to close so it is self retaining it will open and keep showing you the inside structure without any handling so for example if you want to take a pap smear you don't need to have an assistant if you have a cusco speculum you just put this lock it up you can see the cervix get this smear uh, pap smear kit and you can take the pap smear but whereas in sims what happens your hands occupy with and uh, retracting posterior vaginal wall retracting anterior vaginal wall so an assistant should take a smear or an assistant should use this and you will be taking the smear so there will be need of two people but it is not so with this here once you insert into the uh, you will close the blades you will close the blades insert into the vagina and you will rotate it to the anterior posterior vaginal wall and then you will open it to see the cervix once you see the cervix you will lock the instrument and then you can take the smear or you can do any examination that you want any procedure that you want to do like colposcopy guided biopsy and all you can do with this without any assistance or without any assistance of a second person is a self retaining speculum with two blades the screw is tightened to hold the hold the speculum in place to examine the cervix in case of cs cervix erosion polyp as we already told if nothing is there and you want to just examine also you can use these instruments opd procedures like cervical biopsy and pap smear cauterization of the cervix because it protects both anterior and posterior vaginal wall what are the extra benefits of sims over the cuscus and benefits of cuscus over the sims sims you have to retract both separately so it is default in this but in this both can be retracted simultaneously in cuscus both the anterior and the posterior vaginal wall are retracted simultaneously but whereas it doesn't happen with sims it retracts only one vaginal wall at a time even the anterior vaginal wall can be retracted like this but only one vaginal wall at one time and you will require an assistance for a sims another assistant person to do the procedure whereas not for so in cusco speculum you can lock the blades and you can use it but still we prefer sims more than cuscos why because you see there is a groove here and in this groove you can collect this uh, uh, whatever secretions are there that will get collected and you can use that and secondly sims 
gives you a full space to work okay even in cuscos you can collect the secretion but then the movement of the instrument is restricted let me show if the sims is inserted the movement of instrument is not restricted you can move the instrument and take any amount of time or any amount of tissue biopsy and all you will not be having any problem but whereas in cuscos you see the movement of instrument is restricted okay the movement will not be sufficient okay the moment of instrument or the procedure cannot be there you cannot insert your finger and do any examination with cuscos whereas when sims is inside you can go feel the structures and feel the apex of the cervical tear or feel the apex of the episiotomy tear also but not so with the cusco speculum and in cusco speculum it blocks your anterior and posterior vaginal wall so you cannot see if there is any lesions on the anterior and posterior vaginal wall whereas in sims you can see the vaginal wall also by moving the sims to the side you can see the vaginal wall and there are any lesions on the vaginal wall also you can see now to brief it in sims we can do good amount of movement inside so we prefer that and in sims we can see the vaginal wall and its lesion also so we prefer that whereas in cuscos it is self retaining and one person is there then also we can do the procedure so we prefer that coming to sound this is a graduation marked on the uterine sound you can see it is uh, you can see here also there is a marking okay with a angulated at the end okay this is a uterine sound this is the tiniest or the thinnest instrument that can go inside the uterine cavity which will cause no harm and you can see there is a the tip is olive tipped okay olive tipped uterine sound it is called okay so it is long angulated at the tip with a graduation markings on the instrument this is used to measure the cervical length to know the length of the uterus cervical and uterine length you, until you reach the internal os from the external os is the measurement of the cervix and from the internal os till the tip of the fundus is the measurement of uterus you can measure utero cervical length and the direction of the uterus can be known as you saw in the instrument the angle is tilted ahead tip if it is rotated up then it is antiverted if it is rotated down then it is retroverted sounding of the uterus for iucd insertion to know the length of the uterus and if there is any polyp what where is the stalk of the polyp and inversion of the uterus is there or it is a prolapsed or a polyp which is prolapsed outside the vagina and you want to differentiate between the inversion of uterus and the polyp okay inversion of uterus and polyp which is prolapsed outside the vagina that is when you will need this instrument as a small note i'll tell you if this is uterus and this is a, pol a prolapsed polyp you can insert the sound inside for a longer length but whereas in uterine inversion after the angle of inversion it cannot go inside so it will be shorter that is how you will know whether it is uterine inversion or a fungated polyp that has come out of the vagina to know the length of the cervix in prolapse of the uterus and surgery just before doing any surgeries we will measure like for example to differentiate between it is a vaginal prolapse or a cervical elongation that is also one place where we want to know the length of the tissue cervix or the utero cervical length so that we can know what is the head procedure that we should do next coming to valsalam okay this is the valsalam you can see it has a you can see it has a sharp teeth at the tip of the instrument we already told when we were doing a sponge holding forceps instrument this instrument is sharp and it will cause injury to the cervix so we preferably do not use this instrument in obstetrics only in gynec cervix or in a gynecological cases when we want to hold the cervix we will use this instrument any instrument which has a sharp teeth is not used in obstetric uterus or cervix okay and this also has a lock you can see there is a lock and the at tip of the instrument has teeth to hold cervix for copper t insertion biopsy before taking biopsy for example you want to hold have a grip for taking a biopsy then and to cauterize the eroded area also in the on the cervix in opd procedure whereas in ot in dnc for 
a gynec case like endometrial polyp is there when you want to do dilatation and curettage and for vaginal hysterectomy when you want to hold the cervix and pull it down for giving an incision that is also when you will use this instrument but not in obstetric uterus. Usually we do not hold the anterior lip of the cervix, posterior lip of the cervix is held for prolapse. See there is one more question which they will ask you with this is which cervix will you hold with valsalam? We can hold any part of the cervix, but see imagine this is the cervix and this is the opening, this is the anterior lip and this is the posterior lip of the cervix. For all procedures we hold the anterior lip of the cervix. Why do we hold the anterior lip of the cervix? So that we can have access to the os. If we hold the posterior lip, you are closing the view. So you cannot hold the instrument at the posterior view, you cannot have access to the os of the internal os or the external os, so that you cannot enter the internal os. For example, you want to insert a copy. Property. You will hold the anterior lip of the cervix, then you can see the os and then you can insert the copper T. But there are very few procedures when where we use posterior lip to hold the posterior lip. One of them is in vaginal hysterectomy when you want to open the pouch of Douglas. Okay, in when in the pouch of Douglas to open pouch of Douglas in vaginal hysterectomy, we hold the posterior cervix. And the other is like when you want to give a paracervical block, before doing a procedure like DNC, you want to do a paracervical block. What is paracervical block? You hold the posterior lip of the cervix, feel for the uterosacrals and 1 cm medial to it, you will insert lignocaine. When you want to give paracervical block, that is when you will hold the posterior lip of the cervix or when you want to do colpotomy when you want to make a nick on the posterior vaginal wall whenever you want to access to the want access to the posterior part that is only when you will use it in posterior lip otherwise we will always hold it in the anterior lip coming to alice forceps alice is a multiple teeth at the one end lock and handle this is a lock this is the handle at the other end used to hold the surgical structures in surgery to hold the structures. For example, how do you differentiate between valsalam and alice? You can see this also has at the tip of the instrument, this also has a teeth and at the tip of the instrument, this also has a teeth. But how do you differentiate? See, valsalam is longer. There can be long alice also, but long alice and val valsalam are not same. You can see the alice is straight whereas valsalam is curved for us to access to the lip of the cervix and tilt anteriorly so that we can have a look at the os that is why or when we hold it posteriorly we will push it posteriorly to have access it will give an angle whereas there is no angle at the in the alice forceps so you can see this is slightly curved whereas this is straight that is the difference between these two otherwise it is the same it has a handle and it has lock at the end so since this is straight, in any procedure where surgeries we preferably use. So now you know the difference between Alice and Valsalam. So Alice is used in all the surgeries to hold the tough structures like rectus sheath in operations like tubectomy, cesarean, hysterectomy, any surgeries to hold the tough structures, we use Alice forceps. We don't use to hold our fallopian tube. Why? Because it is soft, spongy and a hollow structure. If you hold, it will cut through. So we do not use this to hold tubectomy or the fallopian tubes but we use to hold tough structures like rectus sheath. Also in cases of cesarean section you have cut open this uterus and you have extracted the baby. Now we want to suture the uterus. So when you want to suture you hold the angle with the atlas forceps and then you will take a bite and you will start closing. When you want to hold the ante and posterior lip of the uterus then also you will hold with the atlas forceps and you will go ahead with your suturing. In vaginal operations also we used to hold the angle of the cervix or this end for all this purpose or the cervix also can be held with Alice forceps in hysterectomies and then also cystocele repairs. Any procedure you can name with no not for a hollow or soft structures like intestine, bubbles, sorry, or the fallopian tubes. No, but for tough structures we can use it. Coming to Cocker's forceps. Cocker's forceps you can see there is at the tip of the instrument there is a tooth and all through the instrument there is or all to the head there is a serrations only at the tip there is a teeth this gives a grip to the structure that we are holding for example a uterine clamp in the surgery of abdominal hysterectomy you hold the uterine clamp or the adnexal clamp or the uterosacral clamp this tip 
the teeth at the tip gives a grip to the structure and this prevents from it to slip okay that is why you we use this caucus forceps in cases of clamping the structures when we want to clamp the first clamp second or the third any clamp this is also called clamp just clamp caucus clamp hemostatic forceps in coming to the uses in obstetrics for umbilical cord clamping because it has good grip it will not slip and prevents from bleeding from the fetal side or unit or the maternal side it has a good clamp so we good grip so we use this to clamp the umbilical cord and this serrations helps the cord to crush better also gives a better grip and give a good crushing effect that occludes the vessel so we use in umbilical cord clamping whereas in gynec for pedicles as we already told pedicles like uterines or adnexal or the uterosacrals for those pedicles when you use this the tip teeth prevents it from slipping and gives a better grip due to serrations and you will have a good tissue hold in all hysterectomies be it vaginal and abdominal we use this for clamping and you want to do a tubo ovarian mass when you want to do only self injectomy also you can use this for clamping and also in low rupture of membranes when you want to do arm that is artificial rupture of membranes as we discussed in artificial rupture of membranes class see when you just this tip you will go at the bulging membranes this tip will rub on the membranes you then lock it then it will cause rupture and then you rotate it and pull it out the membranes will get ruptured and there will be like it will be drained out coming to babcock's forceps till now we read about all harsh instrument like valsalam alis or cockers where they have teeth and all whereas babcock's is one instrument there will be a bulge at the tip okay there will be a bulge and there is a serration and it has no teeth it is a simple a soft holding tissue who structures for example when you want to hold a fallopian tube or you want to hold a intestine you use this instrument grasping tubular structures like fallopian tube in pomeroy's method of operation be it anyone or you want to hold the ureter or appendix or any intestine also we use this instrument as it will not cause any injury to the tissue because they are all very soft and fragile tissues the tip of the instrument is atraumatic and has no sharp tooth coming to the uterine dilators uterine dilators are the one we use before any procedures as we told in the sound Di uh, sound is the thinnest instrument which can enter into the uterine cavity so after that when you want to dilate the cervix when you want to get access into the uterus firstly we have to dilate the uterus so when we want to dilate these are the instrument that we use so and at the both ends if it is as shown in the photo at the both ends if it is can be used then it becomes your hegard's dilator hegard's dilator this is hegard's when you can use on both the sides the thinnest it will be number at the middle for example 3 by 6 the thinner side will be smaller number and the thicker side will be a bigger number and this is hockin amber where at the tip of the instrument will be thin as it proceeds to the inside then it becomes thicker or fatter and this will also be numbered same simultaneously but it can be used only from one side okay so this is 13 by 16 is what is written on this instrument so the tip will be thinner than the edge okay the tip is only 13 it starts from number 3 to 6 to 18 to 21 hockin amber is this one where only one side can be used the other side is like this the other side is like this and only one side can be used if it is both the sides that can be used then it is hegard's dilator the smaller size is on the tip and the other side will be bigger number it starts from 3 by 6 to goes up to 18 by 21 it is used for all the procedures when you want to access into the uterine cavity and like dncs where you want to dilate the cervix before curating mtps in molar pregnancy pyometra where you want to dilate the cervix in pyometra you should not do enter into you just have to dilate the os if you enter it is fragile it will cause uterine perforation septic abortions when you want to treat it 
and diagnostic curators like endometrial biopsy in infertility or postmenopausal bleeding or there is a polyp when you want to take a small bit of biopsy then you can before that you will have to dilate the cervix once you have dilated the cervix then we will go for curating this is a uterine curate what happens there are two types single end with sharp curate and double end this is a double end where you can use both the sides and one side will be sharp and one side will be blunt so this is the sharper end and this is a blunter end blunt end is used in all cases of obstetrics as we told before itself the obstetric everything is soft you should always use blunt instruments the blunt edge is used in obstetric cases and the sharp edge is used in gynec cases why do you use in obst uh, obstetric cases like abortions when you want to curate the uterus incomplete abortion when you want to remove the products of conception whereas in gynec when where we use sharp instruments are where you have a uh, endometrial biopsy or you want to remove a small polyp or you want to take small endometrial tissue of biopsy in postmenopausal bleeding that is when you use sharp instrument not in gynec uh, or not in obstetrics where you have to use sharp instruments in dysfunction uterine bleeding when you want to take postmenopausal bleeding in miscarriages usually sharp curate is used in blunt curate is used when it is soft and in molar pregnancies when the uterus is soft for all obstetric cases remember you should use the soft edge whereas in gynec cases you remember it is used in sharp edge coming to carmen's cannula nowadays over dnc we prefer carmen's cannula in miscarriages as this is softer and it is does not harm the uterine tissue more and there is less chance of addition or secondary infertility following uh, which we have in dnc there is less complications with soft cannulas or the carmen's cannulas the perf uterine perforation all the chances are less it causes less damage and to the uterine wall and also products sucked out can be visible they are of different sizes you can see there are two in my hand one is thinner one is fatter so it starts from size 4 and it goes up to size 12 whenever you want to give a negative pressure the suction catheter should be correct size if the os is dilated very less you should use a smaller size cannula if the os is dilated a lot in incomplete abortion then you, you should use a larger cannula because if you do not you are not able to create proper negative pressure then chance of retained products are more so you should use a correct size and based on this dilatation of the os if the os is well dilated use a higher number cannula Coming to manual vacuum aspirator syringe, this is the instrument. We connect the tip to the Carmen's cannula and we use for evacuating the uterus. It, up to 12 weeks of medical uh, pregnancy termination, you can use this. Okay, or other uses are menstrual regulation, incomplete abortions, or in molar pregnancy, endometrial sampling or biopsy. This is preferred over curettage. Why? Because it is simple, it is safe. And it can be done in outpatient basis under local anesthesia and effectiveness is almost up to 98% and less traumatic and takes less time in 10-15 minutes. Just that the, so the manual vacuum aspirator is connected here, then you insert into the uterine cavity and create a negative pressure and then you will cure it on all the walls. Whatever products come will come into the syringe and then you can use that for testing. It is as simple as that. This is preferred because suction apparatus products cannot be uh, taken for sending for histopathology and also it is less harmful, safe as we already told simple, simple, safe and OPD basis we can do effective by 98% less traumatic so less chances of secondary infertility or radiations and less time consuming. What are the other indications where you want to do dilatation and curettage? So much we read about dial, how, why, what are the different instruments used to dilate? Where are you using curette? What is Carmen's cannula? What are, what are all the indications for that? See, basically your viva table doesn't go on the instruments alone. When you pick up an instrument, background of that full instrument will be asked. That is how it goes. Only dilatation, what is it? And on, uh, dilatation and curettage, what is it? Only dilatation is for maybe therapeutic or diagnostic. Diagnostic is when you curate it. Only when you dilate it, it is only therapeutic. For drainage of pyometra or hematometra or spasmodic dysmenorrhea, you want to uh, dilate the oil so that the blood collected is drained and the pain will reduce. And placement of intrauterine device and for doing hysteroscopy. 
where do you want to do dilatation and curettage this is both diagnostic plus therapeutic when you take the specimen sample from there it becomes diagnostic and when you are treating simultaneously it becomes therapeutic so only dilatation is therapeutic alone whereas dilatation and curettage is diagnostic and therapeutic infertility dysfunctional uterine bleeding postmenopausal bleeding endometrial tuberculosis and endometrial ca now coming to the ovum forceps this is an instrument where there is at the tip of the instrument there is a oval shaped curve on either side oval shaped curve on either side you can see here oval shaped curve and there are fenestration see you can see it on the instrument here there are fenestration there is a hole opening in the tip of the instrument and this is the only instrument where it doesn't have any lock okay all the instrument that we showed especially forceps and all the instrument that we showed till now had a lock so this is the only instrument where there is no lock ovum forceps as soon as you hear the name please don't tell this is used to pick up the ovum no doesn't go with the name it is one of the soft and gentle instruments hence we use to remove the products of conception from the cavity without catching the uterus or without injuring the uterus for example this is the uterus we catch the products and we'll remove so it will not there is no holding there is no catch here so the, you just hold it and remove so hence this will not injure your uterine tissue so we'll insert the blades closed into the uterine cavity and then we will grasp the ins, uh, products of conception we will rotate whatever we can everywhere we will grasp it and then we will hold it and we will remove it so this is instrument is used to hold the products of conception from the cavity and remove it but this so that there is no injury to the uterine tissue as there is no lock there is no chance of injury to the uterus while holding and bringing the products out that is what is the use of this instrument let us know about this so this is a episiotomy scissors you can see there is a angulation at the tip at the mid of the instrument where it is tilted little anteriorly so why there is a tilt so that it will be easy for us to visualize when we are giving the incision whatever is the instrument you have to just name it then they can ask any question so this is the favoritely picked up by the examiners and given to you so they can ask you the normal anatomy of the perineum they can ask you structures cut in the episiotomy or how do we give an episiotomy so this blunt end is inserted into the vaginal wall and the sharp end is outside why do we insert blunt end so that we do not injure to the fetal scalp with one hand you should actually give a protection to the fetal head and then you should incise it you can see with one two fingers in the vagina you should say push the fetal head away from the instrument and then you should in insert the instrument and you'd give the incision the incision can be down that is median mediolateral lateral or j shape the most commonly preferred one is mediolateral that uses and advantages and disadvantages we have discussed in episiotomy class so you inserted the blunt end and then you gave the episiotomy so what are all the structures cut and what they will ask you is do you have to give episiotomy to everybody who is delivering vaginally no episiotomy is only given in preferred cases where you want to give it for a rigid perineum primary gravida who is finding difficult to push or when you are expecting a difficult delivery or when there is a operative intervention in such cases big baby you should be giving episiotomy not for everybody firstly you will infiltrate the area with lignocaine and then when the crowning is noted just before crowning you will give episiotomy if you give it faster then it will cause unnecessary bleeding if you give it later it will cause laceration no use of giving so you should know when to give just before crowning is when you should be giving so you will give a local anesthesia then just before crowning of the head you will give the incision and the types are mediolateral median and lateral which are lateral as no more done medial also is no more done because we cannot extend the incisions and episiotomy is sutured in three layers what are the three layers that is mucosa then is the muscle then is the skin mucosa is sutured by continuous stitches whereas muscle is sutured by intermittent stitches and skin is sutured by mattress or with uh, monocryl uh, you can give a continuous stitch also but we prefer mattress stitches what is the suture material that you use we should preferably be using rapid white krill but in garment hospitals we do use cat gut alone chromic cat gut coming to the long straight scissors it's a simple scissors mayo scissors also you can say this is 
just use cut for example you want to cut the umbilical cord or you want to cut any tissue you use this instrument but not to give incision on the skin and all just to cut any instrument that is when you use this to make an episiotomy when you don't have a episiotomy stitches per se you can use this instrument alone you can see there is a small tilt in the tip so when it is tilted you use this scissors for cutting tissue when it is fully straight then you use this scissors for cutting the suture materials straight scissors are used for suture material whereas curved scissors are used for skin or any tissue cutting this is a vacuum extractor sometimes also called ventus or a elastic cup okay it is not a metal vacuum it is a elastic vacuum extractor this is for delivering the fetus in case of when you want to reduce the second stage time or difficult delivery you can use this for delivering the fetus when mother is exhausted and all what are the prerequisites indications complications where you should apply where you should apply at the flexion point so as you all know we applied at the flexion point what is flexion point 3 cm anterior to the posterior frontal lay or 6 cm posterior to the anterior frontal lay anterior frontal lay se 6 cm behind or posterior frontal lay se 3 cm ahead so here is the flexion point why do you have to put it there only because this helps the fetus to maintain its flexed position and does not increase the diameters and cause difficulty in delivery so this helps the fetus to keep its flexed position and what is the uh, pull direction it should be perpendicular to that of the vacuum cup you should pull it in perpendicular direction now coming to the outlet forceps this is the outlet forceps that is the wrigley's outlet forceps used to deliver the head in the low, lower level after plus 2 station okay let me show you how to identify the blade and how to hold the instrument and how to insert the instrument this is already thought in the forceps class but as a revision in a small brief i'll tell you so this is how the instrument is this is a locked outlet forceps wrigley's forceps in exam you can give it in any way they will just put it like this and tell you to show the blade of the instrument how do you lock it how do you use it so for picking up the correct instrument in correct hand what you should do firstly place the instrument on the table okay when you place the instrument on the table it should not tilt for example if you place it in a wrong position it will be tilting or it will make noise okay it will be doing like that but if it stays still that is the the correct position of the instrument and the tip of the instrument should be facing the roof of the room so this is the this is facing the room and it is not tilting so this is the correct position if you keep it in a wrong position it will not be facing the roof and it will be tilting like this it will not move whereas this is not moving whereas this is moving this is tilting and this is not facing the roof so you can see this is facing the roof and it is not tilting so this is how it should be placed and then you will lock the instrument and then when you pick it up in your hand lock the instrument and you pick it up in your hand the one came in your hand exactly so this came in your left hand so this is a left blade this came in your right hand so this is a right blade and if you for if they have given you only one blade so this tip is facing to the left side so this will be a left blade and this tip is facing to the right blade so this will be a right blade see i lock it and you can find out this is the this is the right blade and this is the left blade if they have given one blade it will be difficult but when they have given you two blades you can lock the instrument clearly see if you keep it in wrong position or not it won't lock so only when after keeping it in a correct and position of the instrument then you try to lock the instrument okay this is how you lock the instrument you picked it up and the one came in your left hand is your left blade and the one came in your right hand is your right blade so now that you have identified the correct blade this is the left blade this is the right blade now we'll show the parts of the blade so in the left blade this is the curve of the blade this is the shank and this is the lock so we locked it here now so this is the lock of the blade and this is the handle of the blade understood in curve this is the cephalic curve okay this is the cephalic curve the head comes here na so this is the cephalic curve this slides along the pelvis so this is the pelvic curve so this is the pelvic curve this is the cephalic curve this opening is called fenestration okay why is this 
done or what is the extra benefit of this by because of this fenestration it gives a better grip to hold the fetus firstly it gives a better grip to hold the fetus secondly it makes the instrument way lighter if this is also a metal it becomes very heavy no it become makes the instrument very lighter so now you know how to identify the blades and how now you know the different parts and what is fenestration what is the benefit of this this is the lock this is the handle this is the shank and this is the curve of the blade this is the pelvic curve and this is the cephalic curve head comes here so this is the cephalic curve and this is the pelvis how it glides through so this is the pelvic curve now how will you insert the blade firstly you will pick up the left blade always the insertion is left blade first so you have picked the left blade and then you will go into the pelvis and then rotate it to the left of the mother Be because it is the mother's left is on this side because she'll be lying down like this mother's left is this side so this is the left of the mother you insert it in the posterior sacral fossa first and then shift it to the left of the mother and if you insert it correctly it will usually hold it by itself it will not move unless patient is too much mobile if not you can ask an assistant to hold the blade and then the right blade is inserted directly okay directly it is inserted and then it is locked when all you say it is correctly locked this happens when by malar application is there for the fetus the sagittal suture is exactly in the midway between the two blades and there is not more than 1 cm gap between the fetal head and the blade and the frontonella posterior frontonella is exactly in the midway between the two blades okay that is when you know the blade is correctly applied and it easily locks and then now that it is easily locked and easily available then you will pull because it is an outlet forceps if it is already at the perineum regulus forceps outlet or at the perineum traction is only forwards and upwards when if it is at the plus 2 station you want some more flexion to happen then the direction is downwards and backwards and then forwards and then upwards understood if it is at the perineum only pull it straight and up if it is behind the perineum to maintain flexion firstly pull it down and then straight and then up that's all it is very simple and if you answer this questions you will be really given good appreciating marks in your exam the other question importantly asks is different types of forceps mid cavity or the names killens forceps das forceps and all though those are all not used anymore like rotational forceps what is rotational killens forceps or das forceps but still you should know the name and it is dealt in detail in forceps class you can have a look at that video coming to the umbilical cord and the uh, umbilical cord cutting scissors and umbilical cord clamp so scissors we don't use this anymore we use the normal uh, tissue cutting scissor or mayo scissors itself this is the umbilical cord clamp this you clamp the cord at the fetal end almost some 4 inches away from the uh, body of the baby okay you will take around 4 cm away you will clamp this and this will be left alone until the umbilicus drops away you can see the serrations on the clamp here you can see the serrations like this uh, ragged edges this helps better to crush the umbilical vessels and the, hence this is preferred over normal clamp where or a tying this helps the fetal blood vessels to crush so this converts from fetal circulation into neonatal circulation of the baby okay when you pick up this or if they give you this your question goes to fetal circulation or neonatal circulation you can read it in the book description will be given in the box coming to the doins retractor okay this is one of the instrument we use to retract the tissue in cesarean or hysterectomies or doins or devers retracted is preferred in hysterectomies as this holds the bladder away from the uterine tissue or at the incision site so that we prevent injury to the bladder or adjacent tissues whichever we do not want to injure any other adjacent tissues so all retractors helps to push the tissue away from the surgical site so this is the doins retractor coming to pinard's fetal stethoscope this is the pinard's fetal stethoscope no more use nowadays we use only normal stethoscope this can be like in a, in a museum instrument kept in your instruments tray also in your colleges so this is the end tapering rim it is applied to the ear whereas the other side is applied 
over the maternal abdomen this is at the abdomen of the mother and this is at the tip of your ear for here and then you should not be touching the instrument anywhere while hearing the fetal heart sound this will be at the maternal abdomen and this will be at your ear and then you should not be touching the instrument you just have to lie uh, slightly slant and hear the fetal heart sounds if you touch it will be not heard or it will be masked so you should not be touching this at the maternal end this at the your hand and then you will listen to the fetal heart sound coming to one of the instruments used in cesarean section this is a green armitage you can see this is flat at the tip there is a flat end you can see it is a flat end and also there are serrations giving a grip at the tip of the instrument so what happens when the angle or uterines is cut during your cesarean section you have cut the uterine vessels uterine artery so your alis forceps will not be able to clamp the full uterine tissue so instead of holding with the alis forceps you will use green armitage this helps to crush the uterine artery opening and hence the bleeding will reduce so this at the angles of the uterine tissue you hold it with a green armitage so that the uterines are crushed and there is no more bleeding you Used in cesarean operation, as the tips and uh, tips are broad, wide, and can be compressed. LSCs cut the uterine edges, bleed a lot. Okay, when you cut the uterine vessels, it bleeds a lot. This forceps is applied to the two angles and lower and upper edges of the incision, so that the bleeding is reduced. Wherever you have cut an artery or a vessel which is hugely bleeding, you can use this instrument for crushing the vessel and reducing the bleeding. What is this? We already dealt this in which class? Yes, ARM. You can go look at that. In that, I've shown you the instrument also. So this is the tip of the instrument, which has a tooth. Okay, this tooth is rubbed over the membranes, causing artificial rupture of membranes. Amniotomy. You should not be very surprised to see this instrument. This you should know very well. And in cephalic presentation, if head is already engaged, cervix os is open, and you want to see the lichen color, or you want to know if it is meconium clear or blood tinged. you want to fasten or augment the labor that is when you will do arm no pulsating vessels should be felt on the membrane and no cord must be felt in the uh, ahead of the presenting part if you do it in a wrong way or in case of polyhydramnios if you do it wrongly instead of doing control arm if you do it sudden arm it can cause decompression cord prolapse abrupt show all these things so you should be very careful you can have a look at the arm class Finally, these are all the instrument that we use. What is this? This is a fetal Doppler monitor. Though this is not an instrument, this is a machine which we use to hear the fetal heart or confirm the fetal heart sound. We apply jelly at the tip of the instrument, and then we'll keep on the. at the fetal heart sound in the cephalic presentation, spino umbilical line, and you can listen to the. fetal heart sound with the rate okay this is more accurate and also it uses ultrasound effect the piezoelectric effect so you can hear it and it is a confirmatory also for the fetal heart rate so here ends all the instruments which can be asked in exam there may be few more one or two but not commonly asked these are the most commonly asked instruments in exam hope this clears all your doubts thank you